I should give a word of thanks as I begin. Um, we, we had the GARBC, the General Association of Regular Baptist Churches National Conference here this past week, and person after person after person after person just spoke to the quality outside of me. They spoke to the quality of our staff. Uh, they did a fantastic job in serving and uh, some, some folks who came here to help, we thank you as well. I also want to make mention that uh, they, they absolutely, this is a, a shout out uh, especially to, um, to Aaron and the folks who worked with him, but also to Roger Wiersma and to uh, Greg Cummins and all who work with them. Uh, just a raving about this building and how it was perfectly suited for what needed to be done um, and how they couldn't believe that the building was, uh, that it was here in 1980. Uh, just remarkable. But I want to thank everybody who was involved in serving in that way. I th I'm thankful we're still getting the pro the, uh, all the uh, worship elements put back together from all the changes that needed to be made for the conference. And, uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Join me in prayer, please. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, once again, we come before you thanking you for salvation in Jesus. There is joy in the house of the Lord this morning because this is your house, because you have made it so, because you have made us a household of your children, those of us who are embracing Jesus as Savior and Lord. We may be tired. There may be things in our lives that cause pain. There may be things in our lives that cause sorrow. But we, in the midst of all of that, endure with joy for the sake of the glory of your name and for the sake of the elect. To this you have called us. And we thank you for calling us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for our brothers and sisters who cannot be here today but find themselves in the midst of suffering. There are many. We continue to pray for the Del Carmens, Marley and Nina, and especially Marley at this time. We pray for Jack Wisner. desire to remember well. I pray that today, as we huddle around your word one more time, it might be one more opportunity for us to remember together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have a great deal of respect for the Marine Corps of the United States of America. I was able to work with the Marine Corps for about four years, three and a half. There is so much of the dedication, so much of the seriousness that I have great appreciation for. I love the slogan. Not the shout out, every branch of the military has that. Right? Whether it's Hua or Marine Corps, Ura. And it goes on and on. But Semper Fidelis. 
Semper Fi. Always faithful. There is testimony after testimony. who came before them, Semper Fi. Semper Fi. Semper Fi. We're going to be reading from a text of Scripture this morning. It is at least the hymn part of it. The last three verses are the verses that my grandfather spoke at our wedding before the service started. As a challenge to those who might be at our wedding who were unbelievers, but also for a challenge for those who are attending our wedding that might be believers and a challenge to his grandson who is being married. 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning in verse 8, remember we've just come out of Paul describing to Timothy, you've got to persevere, you've got to endure, and you've got to play by the rules. There's got to be discipline. If you're going to be involved in the ministry of the gospel, learn some things from other vocational callings such as a good soldier, Semper Fi, always endure. The discipline of an athlete, the perseverance of a hardworking farmer, Verses 8 through 13 this morning. Let me put this into clear picture, Timothy. Perhaps God brings to mind the soldier. He brings to mind the athlete, and he brings to mind the hardworking farmer at different stages of your ministry. But if you want to keep your head clear through the whole thing, here's the deal. Remember Jesus the Christ. His resurrection. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering bound with chains as a common criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Hallelujah. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, We will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Because there's one thing God cannot do. He cannot cease being God. He cannot and he will not deny himself. Man, 
if you came in here discouraged this morning, I pray that the reading of God's Word has encouraged you already. Has it? I'm thinking of the words of the song again, Megan. Right? There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Why? Well, because even when we are faithless and we have been, amen? Even when we are faithless, He remains faithful. Christ Jesus is risen from the grave. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Right? Have you all partied too much already? Or perhaps you were awakened as Robin and I were by a neighbor who decided that 4.15 this morning would be the great time for them to do their fireworks display. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Semper Fi, Timothy. He's already said that in chapter 1 twice. He has said that at the beginning of chapter 2. Semper Fi. Always faithful, regardless of the circumstances. You remain faithful. You endure for the sake of the gospel. You take your share of the sufferings that come as a result of being faithful to the gospel. The rally cry. That is an oorah moment. Where you're rallying together, realizing the battle is real. If you don't see it, open your eyes. If you can't hear the sounds of battle, open your ears. If you don't sense it, walk in this world and you will see clearly we have been called to a spiritual battle. Be faithful, always faithful, always faithful, regardless of the circumstances. And you can follow me as well, Paul will say to Timothy. But I want you to see something very clear because I want your faith and I want your faithfulness to be grounded so that you can know that you can endure. I don't think I can. If it's in your own strength and according to your own power and your own story, you cannot That's why I beg you, remember Jesus Christ. Church, are you with me? When circumstances come at us and people come at us hard, our first response is usually to think of and to try to preserve ourselves. And he's saying, remember Jesus Christ. And I want you to get this word. This remember is not a a fond thinking back on. Now, I know we've gotten used to that truth. 
But I am calling you to mark that right now, right here today, and the ongoing impact of that reality. But why does Paul talk about the resurrection and not the cross? We've seen Paul talk about the centrality of the cross time and time again, right? I want you to remember that Jesus Christ is risen from the grave because it shows the powerful effect and the reality that all that he has promised in his life and death is true and faithful and right and good. I want you to know his resurrection validated everything he said about his life and his death and his teachings. When he said not only that he could, but he would and does pay the penalty for our sin through his shed blood on the cross of Calvary, the resurrection said, it's true. A dead man was raised to life never to die again. Endure, Timothy. That resurrected Lord is your Lord and Savior. Think of the sufferings he endured. And think of the glory he now experiences as a resurrected Lord. Everything that Jesus said about his perfect sinless life was true and good and right. Everything that has been made known, that his record of righteousness would become our record of righteousness validated in the resurrection. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Descendant of David, offspring of David, grounds him historically. The historical fact of the resurrection but the main impact, the reality of the effects of that resurrection in our life today. You think about that. You get ridiculed, sometimes berated, because of your fidelity, your faithfulness to making known the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Jesus whom you proclaim, who is the gospel, I, you, we need to get this. This Jesus whom we proclaim has been resurrected from the dead, never to die. recitation of certain words in a prayer-like formula, tried it. And in the end, found myself grasping after the wind. Why? Because saying the right words in the right order don't save you. Remember Jesus, the Christ. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Is everybody in the house with me? Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Say it with me. Jesus saves.
risen from the dead. He's risen from the dead. He's the offspring of David as preached in my gospel, the gospel that was given to me by Christ himself. It is because of this gospel, Timothy, that I am suffering. These aren't just general sufferings of aches and pains and heartache relationships, although some of those sufferings could be heartaches of relationships that come from his fidelity to the gospel. But I'm suffering in that I am bound with chains as a criminal, a common criminal. You know where this word is used? This common criminal word? There's only one other place. It's in Luke. It's used for the two, the two dudes that are on either side of Jesus at the cross of Calvary. That's what I've become for the sake of the gospel. I'm a common criminal, bound in chains. So, now is this during the time of Nero and everything that's going on? Eh, probably. But here's the deal. I, th I think of this, of this historical lesson often. A pastor. The Roman emperor, and this made the testimony of this guy sharing his faith in Jesus Christ, remembering Jesus Christ and the power of Jesus Christ, knowing that there was no greater message for him to make known. People heard of this little pastor, and it's not like he's a big city guy. He's kind of more of a rural kind of guy. In fact, in order to, to keep his life for an extended period of time, he would have to run because the testimony of his preaching made its way all the way back to the Roman emperor. Think of that. This is an 80-some-year-old guy who's proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know the... But there is something that is tremendously freeing in the gospel that this 80-some-year-old preacher is preaching. These people don't have fear of the Roman Empire. In fact, they have a vision, an eternal vision, that is quite glorious that causes them to live today in light of what they say they know to be true about the future. What can you do to me today that's going to take that away from me? Not a blessed thing. Glory, hallelujah. And that's part of what this text goes on to say, right? This man is destroying our gods. They sent soldiers out to get him. They would chase him. And then people would try to protect him. And they would take him through different places. And they finally found him.
common criminal. Why? Because I'm sure the indictment was much the same. There are all kinds of disturbances that take place when the gospel is proclaimed. Because Jesus, when it comes to being made right with God, Jesus is not inclusive in his thought of what enables persons to be made right with God. Jesus is an exclusivist, saying, I am the only way, the only truth, the only life. No person is made right with the Father. No person can be made right with the Father unless they come through me because I am God himself and man, the fullness of humanity. Remember Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm suffering as a common criminal in my chains. But here's the beauty. My being imprisoned and other leaders being imprisoned, it may slow the furtherance of the gospel message in some ways, but you know what no human ruler has ever been able to do? You know what no circumstance has ever been able to do? try as world leaders have tried throughout history since Jesus? You can't shut Jesus down. You cannot cease the proclamation of the Word of God. We have, through our history, church, had people who memorized Holy Scripture when they could no longer have copies of it so that they could gather in the dark with other followers of Jesus Christ and other non-believers for the purpose of making known Jesus. We want to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and preach the word. Why? Because through the word we know Jesus and his life and his death and his resurrection. It's the message that every person needs to hear. There is no message greater. There is no message more needed. And there has never been a time in the United States where the need is greater than now. The Word of God is not bound. But they're trying to limit the different places where you can... The Word of God is not bound by whatever our government decides. Amen? Can't be. Take heart, brothers and sisters. Remember Jesus the Christ. No governmental leader has been risen from the grave never to die again, showing his power and authority over death, sin, and Satan. That belongs to only one person. He is our risen Lord and Savior, the head of the church, namely Jesus. Take heart. Now, because all of this is true, I need for you to understand, Timothy, the call that I'm trusting to you is the call that I myself have received. And by God's grace and for his glory, I believe that I can look at you and say, Semper Fi. I have not been perfect. The Lord Christ was the only one who was perfect. But I am finishing my race.
the sake of the elect. I will endure everything because God has produced within me a love for His people. Isn't this interesting here that he uses the word elect? Well, pastor, I don't like that word. I don't like the thought of election. message. Do you see this in the text? He's not talking about sermonizing in the church here. He's saying, I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I want to continually make Jesus known So whoever God is calling unto himself for salvation, because God is the one who does the work of salvation, we do not. Our job and our success in evangelism, once again, is simply to faithfully proclaim the entire gospel to whole persons. God takes that and he moves as he wills. The result belongs to God, not to us. I will endure everything on account of the gospel. I will endure suffering as a common criminal because of my fidelity to the gospel in order that people who are God's would hear the gospel message and surrender, they would turn, they would repent of their sin, and they would bow the knee to the lordship of Jesus Christ, accepting Jesus as Savior and Lord. There's nothing greater than that. I would give my life for the sake of the elect, that they would know Jesus, that they would obtain the salvation that is found only up in the short game, that our whole life is focused simply on what comes next here and now. And we're striving to build our name, our kingdom, our will in a variety of ways that our culture tells us you need to function in order to build your own name, kingdom, will, so that the name, kingdom, will of our Lord Christ dwindles in the midst of our building our own. We've completely lost sight of the long game. We live in light of the short game, and that was the warning that Paul was giving to Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ. 
I endure everything for him. I endure everything for the sake of the elect so that they could obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus. And so must you, Timothy. Semper Fi. But it's true, it may cost me relationships. Semper my money. Semper Fi. Is everybody with me? There's nothing greater. There's nothing more important, more significant. Every single one of us has been called to the battle. And it is one thing to do the rally cry up front and everybody raises their hand and together shouts, Oorah! It's another thing when you and three of your buddies are behind a bunker with a whole battalion coming toward you. What are we going to do? Do we give up and renounce the name of Jesus? Do we renounce salvation? And what are you going to do? I'll endure anything for the sake of my Lord Jesus Christ and his people. Semper Fi. See, we have the conversations now, brothers and sisters, because chances are far greater if you're trying to decide in the midst of the battle, am I going to be faithful right now or not? Chances are far greater that you will not. But if we can take the time now, and remember Jesus Christ. If we can take the time now and remember the calling that he's placed on our lives. If we can take the time now and remember that he has called us for his glory and for the sake of his people to make known and faithfully live out the gospel. There's a greater likelihood that we will remain faithful when the battle comes at us hard. And we will remember that we have never walked alone. And that we do not walk alone now in the midst of the battle. Remember Jesus the Christ. Here's the trustworthy saying.
suffering's worth it. If we have died, if we truly have died with Christ, let me encourage you, brother, come what may, regardless of what takes place, we will live with Him this day and forevermore, every day for eternity. We will live with the glorious Christ. Son, you must endure. If we endure, we will also reign with him. It's worth suffering today because the sufferings of this day are not worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed through us when we are revealed to be truly the children of God in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But a warning. If we deny the Lord Christ, as the Lord Christ himself said, he will look to us and say, depart from me, literally, you were never mine. but we did X, Y, and Z in your name. You were never mine. But let me give you great encouragement this day because honestly, brothers and sisters, language like this is scary. And I get it. And I get language like this message is scary being called into battle. Being called. when I live like there are times pastor when I live out and I get this I believe Lord right I believe help me in my unbelief Separate God's people from his love in Christ Jesus through the body and blood which was given for us. Nothing. Remember Jesus Christ. Because even in those moments, 
where we are faithless? God is Semper Fi. God is always eternally faithful. Because he cannot deny and will not deny his own character. How can I be confident in a hostile world, increasingly hostile society and culture here in the United States? How can I be confident in making known We will endure it, and one day we will reign with him forever and ever. Regardless of what we feel this day, one day we will stand in his presence and know beyond any shadow of a doubt that would ever come.